Hey guys, what's up? Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about recording vocals, um, concepts about how to get the best tone out of your singers, um, and then also, you know, how your equipment works. You know, understanding how your microphone really does work is a big part of getting a good tone. So I'm going to start with polar patterns. Um, and, you know, you'll recognize, you know, if you've heard the terms cardioid and hypercardioid and omnidirectional and figure eight, if you've heard those terms and it's all sort of flown over your head, this is what the deal is. So today I'm using the Avantone CV12, um, which actually has nine polar positions. Now, overall, the concept of polar positions is, you know, you can sort of think of it as this is switching the positions changes how the microphone interacts with the environment that it's in. So a lot of times for recording vocals, you'll see, you know, engineers using cardioid or hypercardioid. Um, and meaning, you know, if you look at the diagrams, hopefully I'm popping one up here now. Um, <laughs> if you look at the diagram, what one of those diagrams is really telling you is, you know, if you, this, the dead center of it is the microphone, okay? And then you should see, you know, the radius that you see drawn on that graph is the area that the microphone is picking up. Anything in that area is called on access. Anything outside of that area is called off access. Um, so a cardioid position has very good off access reje rejection. Hypercardioid is even better. So what that really does mean is, you know, you can think of a cardioid pattern coming off of this microphone pretty much like this, almost flat out, maybe a little bit curved back, but then back out here, you know? So that's what it's doing. That's a normal cardioid. Now, a hypercardioid is going to be even tighter. So it's going to come out a little bit more, you know, I'm being dramatic for the effect, but it's coming out a little more like this. So, you know, anything around here, back, back and to the sides of the microphone, not getting picked up nearly as much as in a typical cardioid pattern. Now, obviously, there's on um, this one, um, there's omnidirectional, which would be awesome for people singing all around it, like a large group of people, or the figure eight pattern, which would be great for just two people. This is by far my favorite microphone for recording vocals. It's clear, it's beautiful, and the nine polar patterns make it incredibly versatile. Anyway, I'm not doing a demo about the mic. So, <laughs> so. So that's, that's it about the polar patterns. Just think of them as, you know, this is how my microphone is going to interact with the environment that it's in, and what exactly do you want to be getting an image of? Now, that's the next thing. There's been a lot of videos that are online now, and, you know, I, I think there's some really great stuff, you know, Recording Revolution. I don't know if you ever watch my videos, but I've been enjoying watching yours, and I'm, you know, sort of welcoming you to the YouTube recording scene. Um, anyway, I think, you know, he's made some great videos about the topic, and a lot of people made a lot of great videos about the topic, but one thing that I kept seeing that sort of I, I think could be a little bit misleading is the whole demonstration where it's like when you're farther away from the microphone, it's a narrow and brighter sound. And when you're close up to the microphone, it's nice and low sounding. You know what I mean? So I think that's a little deceiving. I think, you know, when I record and I think the overall concept, you know, what as an engineer, what you're trying to do is capture the most accurate picture of whatever it is that you're recording. If it's a voice, if it's a guitar, if it's a piano, you're not trying to make somebody's voice sound more bassy or more trebly. What you're trying to do is capture the sound of that voice or instrument, whatever it is. So if you're, you know, recording someone who has a very bass heavy voice, you're going to want them up close to the microphone with a pop filter, you know? And I have to be careful because I'm not using one today. But if you have sort of like a nasally voice or a bright voice, sort of like I do, and uh, Valentina from Sunshine Superman, you know, like on all those videos, you'll see I have her about two feet away, um, and I'll usually say about an arm's length away from the microphone itself. And that really does accurately capture the sound of my voice or her voice. It's another reason that I don't need pop filters because there's enough of a distance. And also the proximity effect of a microphone like this is, you know, really nice outside of it. Like, you know, where I am right now, about two feet away from it. I really enjoy the tone of this microphone at a distance. Not to say that when I'm close to it, it's a bad thing, but you know, for my voice and for Valentina's voice, um, I think it's better for us to be farther away from the microphone. So that's really under, you know, a really important thing to remember. You're not trying to, you know, make the voice more bassy or more bright. You're trying to capture what the voice sounds like. So you need to listen to the singer 
and sort of determine in your own ear, is this a bright voice or a low voice or a dark voice or, you know, whatever it is, and then try to appropriately set your microphones up. Um, so, you know, that's the kind of stuff that's really going to make a big difference. A couple of things that I found personally that work really nicely for people with um, extra bright voices. Uh, I'll try to actually line the top, and you can see that it's kind of happening right now. The bottom of my lip is sort of lined up with the top of the microphone. And beca that's because it's, you know, coming out the... Ugh, I keep touching it. I hope you're not <laughs> hearing me bumping the mic. Um, the, you know, it's a three-dimensional thing, the way this picks up. It's coming out, you know, like a large sphere at me. It's not coming out just in the sides. It's a big, you know, sort of like a bubble coming out of the diaphragm. Um, so even though I am, you know, not the bottom of my lip is lined up at the top of the microphone, I'm two feet away from this microphone. So that means that I'm definitely on access with this thing. You know, it's definitely picking up my voice. Um, but I have found that aiming it, you know, and this really has worked with my, um, the CAD E100S, the Tryon 8000, and the Avantone CV12. This trick has worked on all, all mics that I've used it on. Um, but at a distance, it does help to retain some of the lower qualities of my voice, especially, um, by lining it up more with the bottom of, with my bottom lip. I'm chewing my own words, sorry. So anyway, that's one of my little, you know, favorite things to do with me or Valentina. I don't, I don't try to go dead center on the diaphragm or anything. I'd like to go a little bit, uh, you know, have it a little bit below me. Now, another thing that I'm sure a lot of people are <laughs> going to argue with, um, but I found this just, you know, simply by accident. Um, and it was in the recording process for a video and I didn't want the microphone to be in the video so much. We were limited in space. So one thing I did um, was actually, I had the microphone kind of close to a wall. Uh, the wall did have my uh, producer's choice acoustic blankets here, which I really love. So it was a little bit baffled, um, but I used it on Valentina's voice, and by far that was one of the biggest, beefiest tones I've ever gotten out of her voice. Um, and I think it being next to a really dampened wall made a big difference as far as what was coming back you know, to her and all that kind of stuff. But that's my own personal stuff and my own personal room, but these are the kinds of suggestions that I'm always giving you guys is to experiment, you know? Move the microphone around your rooms. Um, don't just sit there and switch the polar patterns and go, that's working this way and that's working this way and then be done with it. I mean, pick up your microphone and move it. If you don't like the vocal tone you're getting right out of the gate, you know, as you press record, you should like that vocal tone right away. You don't want to try to have to, you don't want to have to fix it in the mixing stage. You want it to be, you know, really good right out of the gate. And that turns, you know, that works with the whole concept of less is more. You know, if you get a good initial recording, you're going to have to do a lot less in the mix stage. And uh, less is more, less is more. And that is a good thing. So I think I have rambled on long enough. If you'd like to hear any of the examples of what I'm talking about, please check out the Sunshine Superman PA channel. Um, there's a link for that below and probably floating around my head somewhere. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I've talked about today, feel free to comment. I'm always, you know, on my computer, part of that comment section. And of course, sign my mailing list for the free home recording shoppers list. There's a link below for that. You guys have a great day. Have fun recording out there. Talk to you later.